We are just getting this breaking news in. President Biden has just approved $800 million in new military assistance for Ukraine, hours after he spoke with President Zelensky about aid and strengthening sanctions against Russia. Meanwhile, in the last hour and a half, Russia imposed sanctions of its own against 398 members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Yes, I know what you're asking. Who were the ones that didn't get sanctioned? We're working on that, too. But Russia announced today it has now taken full control of Ukraine's port in Mariupol. President Vladimir Putin of Russia says peace talks have basically come to a dead end, and Russia will, quote, continue its offensive until completion. But as Putin continues his bloody crusade, enter hedge fund manager and now human rights activist, Putin enemy number one, Bill Browder. Browder's latest effort to expose the dictator and his oligarch friends who are desperately trying to hide their money is now detailing his story in his new book, Freezing Order. The timing of the book's release is uncanny, as Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, last night offered Putin a trade of sorts. One pro-Russian oligarch in Ukrainian custody for, quote, Ukrainian boys and girls held captive by the Russians. Joining us now, Bill Browder, author of Freezing Order. Uh, Bill, already, what, number two on the Amazon bestseller list. Uh, I'd say congratulations, but the topic is just frightening, worrisome. But talk about Freezing Order, what it means, and how you have focused on the oligarchs and their money. Well, what, what I discovered, so my, I have uh, my lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, um, uncovered, um, he's a Russian lawyer, uncovered a massive government corruption scheme in Russia uh, 13 years ago. He exposed it, um, was arrested by the, the officials he exposed. He was then tortured for 358 days and killed. And um, I, after his murder, I made it my duty and my mission to go after the people who killed him to make sure they face justice. Mm. And that has led to an investigation, it's led to two things, uh, uh, something called the Magnitsky Act, which freezes the assets and bans the visas of the people who do this type of thing. And two, it led to an investigation of who got the money. And we discovered, as we did this investigation, that Putin got some of the money. And we discovered, doing this investigation, that this crime was one of a thousand or more similar crimes. And the amounts of money that have been stolen by Putin and his people are in the hundreds of billions of dollars. And what that says to me is that this war in Ukraine is not about NATO, it's not about EU joining, uh, Ukraine joining the EU. This is about Vladimir Putin being afraid of his own people after stealing all their money. Mm -hmm. And he started this war in order to distract the people of Russia, because that's what dictators do. Well, uh, we've got 10,000, possibly up to 20,000 people dead in Mariupol, according to the mayor of that port city. Vladimir Putin and his friends, I don't know if they're still friends of his now, because they've all been sanctioned. They're broke, are they not? And we can put some of them up on the screen, whether it's Roman Abramovich, who just was forced to sell the Chelsea soccer team, or uh, Oleg Deripaska, who has been on this show from Davos, where I interviewed him many years ago. You have to tell me exactly what they're thinking right now. If they're angry at Putin, can they take him on? Or are they completely toothless now that their benefactor, so to speak, uh, is in charge and doesn't want to listen to any of them complain. <clears throat> Completely toothless. These oligarchs are only oligarchs. They're only rich because they're being uh, given permission by Vladimir Putin to be rich. Uh, they operate at his pleasure and his pleasure only. At any point, Vladimir Putin can say to these oligarchs, I want your money. Um, I'm going to take it away from you if you don't do the following things. And so. Vladimir Putin is the owner of half the money that you see on the oligarchs rich list. And these people are his financial trustees and financial concierges. And when we look at these oligarchs and we say, how do we want to go after Putin? We sanction the oligarchs. And so these people are not happy, but it doesn't matter whether they're happy or not. The point of sanctioning the oligarchs is to show Putin that his money is no longer mm -hmm. accessible. I believe we were just showing Mikhail Khodorkovsky. He was an oligarch. He became the wealthiest man in Russia until he ran against Putin for president. He was imprisoned by Putin for 10 years. He was your arch enemy, was he not? Uh, because he was one of these people who had taken all of the money, a kleptocrat. 
Now you two are working together, are you not? But my question is, what about the money trail and where it goes to the coasts of Spain in waterfront properties or London, all of those properties, and here in the United States? It, it, go, it goes to all the places you might imagine a rich person wants to spend their money. Aspen, Colorado, um, Palm Beach, Manhattan, uh, Paris, the south of France, Malaga or Marbella. Um, uh, uh, and, and by the way, all these yachts, you've seen the yachts, yes. you've seen the picture of the We're yachts. The mm -hmm. yachts. I mean, it's, it's, it's obscene. It's obscene because this is the money that was stolen from the people of Russia. This is the money that should have paid for medicine, for education, filling in the potholes, public services. That's gone for these obscene, ostentatious displays of wealth by this very small group of people of Vladimir Putin and those who surround him. And that's why Putin felt the need to go to war, because this is unsustainable. You can't have a supposed democracy where people vote and, and have this type of theft over such a long period of time. Putin understood this. Phil, we, have so to, his, we do have to run, but uh, Medvedev, uh, not Medvedev, I'm sorry, <laughs> Medvedchuk, he is the Ukrainian pro-Russian oligarch who has now been taken into custody by Zelensky. Uh, Zelensky has said, you know what, we will offer a trade. We'll give you back to Russia if you will let us have back our prisoners of war, boys and girls of Ukraine that are now in Russian custody. Will Putin ever bite on that? Uh, uh, so th th this is a great example. Um, the, the, the Russians said, you know, we don't care about that guy. You know, it, th this just goes <laughs> to show, you know, you, you, you throw your lot in with Vladimir Putin and he'll, he'll sell you down the river. <laughs> nothing, nothing good is going to happen to that guy. Bill Browder, author of Freezing Order, his first book, Red Notice, riveting, unbelievable story, all true. Um, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.